We do it in the herd. I call it my preseason, postseason top ten in college football. This is when the regular season and college conference championships are done. Uh, this does not count the bowls. This is, I look at your, there's two or three things I look at. I look at your returning starters. I look at your coach. I look at your quarterback. Generally, to play for a national championship, Bama's an exception. You need an exceptional quarterback. But I, more than anything, I look at your schedule from late October to November. That's what I look at. I want to see your last five or six weeks of schedule. And if you have tough road games, doesn't matter how good you are, you will not end up in the top ten. That's why Michigan ends with Ohio State. I think they lose that game and get knocked out of the top ten. Notre Dame has two tough roadies at the end of the year, at Miami, at Stanford. Even with a good year, and I think they'll be pretty good, they'll get knocked out. I like Auburn a lot. Auburn doesn't make the cut because they have a brutal schedule from mid-October on. So here we go. This is my preseason but postseason top ten. Number ten, Wisconsin. I did this out of total respect for Paul Chris, the head coach. 10-plus wins for Wisconsin in the first two years, and they won both their bowl games. They returned 15 starters. They have a workable Big Ten schedule. Not the easiest, not the toughest. This is out of respect for Paul Chris, who I thought was a meh hire. Um, I, I, this, this came down to Wisconsin or Oklahoma State at number 10, and I just went with the coaching staff. Uh, and the defense, their defense is loaded with returning starters, juniors, and seniors. So it's a veteran defense and a very good staff, Wisconsin 10. Number nine. Louisville's number nine. This is out of respect for Bobby Petrino and Lamar Jackson. They only return 14 starters. I think they'll lose to Florida State and Clemson. But they're going to have so many blowout wins with arguably the best quarterback coach in the country and one of the best quarterbacks in the country that I think they're going to have 70-point games in two or three or four games. And that will be so glamorous and so dynamic. They'll overcome losses and end up at number nine. Number eight. A team I absolutely love, James Franklin and Penn State. I'd put them higher but I think they have the toughest schedule of any top 10 team. Trace McSorley, their quarterback, set a school record for passing yards and passing touchdowns as a sophomore last year. They have the best running back in the country. They are so much fun to watch. For years and years, Penn State was good but boring. Penn State is so much fun to watch. They've got a dynamic little quarterback. They throw it down the field, vertical threats, but their schedule is brutal, so I can only put them at eight. Number seven. Now, this Clemson team, people don't like as much as I do, but their recruiting over the last three or four years has been phenomenal. And I don't think they beat Florida State, but I think they can beat everybody else. They only return 11 starters, and they lose to Sean Watson. But this is really about their recruiting, their returning defense, their schedule, and their coaching staff. I just think Clemson's going to be a top 10 team until Dabo Sweeney leaves. I have them at number seven. Number six. Oklahoma's going to be like Louisville, a fireworks show. Baker Mayfield, 22-4 and as a starting quarterback. Uh, last couple of years, you may not realize this. They've been ranked fifth in each of the last two seasons. They've got their talent. They don't have Alabama talent, but they're better at quarterback. They return nine starters on offense, and I think they win a couple of their tough games late. I have Oklahoma at number six. Number five. Washington has the easiest schedule in the country for a top 20 team, mostly home blowouts for the first seven weeks until they face Stanford. They also return Jake Browning at quarterback. I don't think he's going to be a great NFL quarterback, but he was the Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year. They have stars at running back and receiver, but it's really about defense. It is their best front seven defense since I was a you know, 25-year-old guy and loved the Huskies. They're going to keep people under 20. They gave Alabama problems defensively in their bowl game. Washington, though, will lose to USC in the conference championship. That's why I have them at five. Number four. Here's my final four. Alabama only has 11 starters returning, and they lost a bunch of playmakers in the box defensively. They will not be as suffocating on defense. And Jalen Hurts has some limitations as a quarterback vertically. I think Alabama ends up on sheer coaching. I think their secondary is amazing. It'll be kind of a boring, typical pound the football, run the football, Alabama four. Number three. USC does not have a bye, but they have by far the best quarterback in college football, Sam Darnold, who finished the year 9-0 with 29 touchdowns and completing 67.5% of his throws. They've got playmakers returning in the box defensively, a, a thick stable of running backs, tight ends, and secondary performers. Their schedule, they do have to go to Notre Dame, 
But a lot of the tough games like Stanford and Texas and Utah uh, tend to be at home. So I think they've got a pretty workable road schedule. I have USC, one of the final four teams. Number two. Florida State, uh, this is a toughie. I have Florida State returning 16 starters. Uh, their quarterback returns who completed 3,400 uh, yards passing. I think they beat Alabama in the opener. That's why I have Alabama at four. They'll get knocked down a peg. I think Florida State, in my opinion, is the most talented football team in the country. Their defensive line recruiting in the last several years has been unbelievable. They are just going to suffocate teams. But my number one team in the country, number one, Ohio State, JT Barrett, 26 and four as a starter. Urban Meyer's the best in game coach. They do have a tough roadie to end the year at Michigan, but they have dominated that series for the last decade. And I don't think Michigan, with only five returning starters, is ready to beat this Ohio State team. I think they can beat them the following year. Urban Meyer is 61 and six as a head coach. Yes, they looked awful against Clemson. That'll be a motivator. They've made some coaching twinge, uh, tweaks. I think Ohio State wins the national championship, and it'll be the Buckeyes, the Seminoles, the Trojans, and the Crimson Tide in my final four this year.